Good morning. Welcome to another edition of the 411 Talks on Radio Show, Red Pill Edition. My name is Leon Jones. And in this segment, I want to talk about these fraudulent religious pastors. Now, I know a couple of YouTubers, shout out to Brother Ringo, he broke it down. There's some other brothers talking about these pastors. And I've talked about Christians numerous times on my platform. In this video, I'm going to call out these fraudulent so-called religious leaders. So the title of this video is Pastors are frauds. Pastors are frauds. Now, the reason why I'm calling a number of these pastors frauds is because you have a number of them who claim they're for God. But at the end of the day, they're not for God. You got your Creflo Dollars, your T.D. Jakes. You have Kenneth Copeland, who has a net worth of $700 million. You have your Oral Roberts. You have your Joel Osteens. And you have a number of other pastors out there who talk about God all day. And they preach it to the congregation, and they think they have all this healing power. But during this coronavirus, and this is why I'm exposing it, just like I asked about the feminist in my last video, well, where are all of these religious leaders? Do they talk about God? Do they have this power? Because I know in the Bible, I'm going to paraphrase, we're not supposed to look at man as God but the people who are supposed to be ingrained with God aren't doing God you have a number of individuals who are still asking for money from their congregations because there's no church service you have a number of individuals that are using the cash application so they can get quick money. And this is why we get on a lot of these Christian women out here because they actually believe in these pastors. And believe you me, when this so-called coronavirus is over, these women are going to run right back to these pastors. They're going to give them money. They're going to make it they're going to be in church all day singing hallelujah praise the Lord and they're going to love their pastor and they're going to forgive their pastor well, the Bible says forget but when there is a crisis should, see, should some of these pastors be with a number of victims of this coronavirus. I mean, if you see the hospitals in New York City, they look like refugee camps. Now, don't get me wrong, you can Photoshop anything, but I do believe there are a number of people who are sick. Now, when we talk about God, aren't pastors supposed to be a representative of God? Because if you look at these pastors, they're running around. Talking about God. Preaching from scriptures. 
talking about family, telling their congregation how they should conduct themselves. But what this pastor isn't saying behind the scenes to his congregation is, well, you need to conduct yourself by giving me money. Now, I know a number of these churches are under 501c3. We all know that. They're religious institutions. But I'm talking about the principle. And the principle of some of these pastors is just like a pimp. In fact, it's just like some of these guys on YouTube. Now, it's nothing wrong with making money. But you got a number of individuals on YouTube who are telling everybody to donate. Now, of course, with this coronavirus, statewide rule out there, nationwide rule, you got to be six feet away from other people. That's a precautionary measure. I understand that. But should these pastors be in the hospitals with these victims? I mean, is it God that says he's supposed to heal? Does that pastor represent God? Should the pastors be in church with all that healing power that they say they have? I'm going to tell you, it's all bullshit. These pastors don't have any power. They never had any power. They're con artists. And you see, you sisters, black, white, Latino, go to church, you're playing this bullshit. You love this bullshit. Because you support these pastors no matter what they do. They can fuck around on their wives. And you're still going to support these pastors. These pastors could be homosexuals. But you're going to support them. Because you believe in these pastors more than you believe in your own man, some of you women. And no matter what I'm saying here on YouTube, because I'm preaching this truth there is no outcry from you Christians regarding these pastors in donating to some of these hospitals to help the sick to help the wounded I mean after all the government and I am not a fan of the government but the government is doing more for the citizens than you pastors. But you pastors are looking for money. Creflo Dollar flies around in his jet. Oral Roberts, Pat Robertson. Okay, they've done some good things. But the time to show up is now. You can't talk about it. You got to practice the principle. If you say you're about healing, then let's see you heal. Let's see you put God's word into action. I'll wait. Because you know what? You're not going to do it. Why? Because you don't have any power. You have money and prestige that you got from your congregation. And you pimp out your congregations to get rich. But again, you don't have a lot of smart people in your congregations. Because a number of them are women. And of course, you're going to have individuals who are women. And of course, some men, let me add the men in there as well, who worship you as a God. 
they'll see that people like me won't talk about you. But at the end of the day, your congregation has nothing but jaded people, gullible people. your congregation don't read the Bible or if they do they're reading words and you're preaching the words but you're not out here helping the sick because at the end of the day I thought the power was in healing and you're gonna have many more individuals die from this coronavirus. And see, when it comes to religion, it shames me that a number of you pastors out here are asking for tithes. 10%. But you have your congregation who supports you, but at a time of need, you're not supporting your congregation. You have a number of members in your congregations or in your ministries who are out of work. They don't have money to come to church. But you're still begging for money. This is what makes you frauds. And I've always thought religion, ever since I stopped going to church, was fraudy in anyway. It's all bullshit. It's all Utilize and control the masses. Now, correction, control the masses. Now, I'm not saying I'm not a believer in God. I do believe in God. But when it comes to God, you got to practice his principles. But you pastors who have a lot of wealth that you've made from your congregation. You're not helping your congregation. And you're making religion look real bad at this time. I mean, again, religion is supposed to be something to give you hope. You know, Obama used to preach hope and change. Well, that's what I thought religion was. You're not giving anyone hope when you're asking for money. Now some of you pastors who are multi-millionaires can help some of the people in your congregation. But you refuse to. Because you were never about the congregation anyway. You were always about yourself. Now, don't get me wrong. It is not all pastors. But I name a few of them for making big dollars. Where's Joyce Meyer? All of them. Because it's funny, even your left-wing celebrities, they're trying to donate to the cause. And I don't believe in any of these celebrities. Again, the government. I don't believe in the government. Because the government is not supposed to be here to supply us with an income to live. That's what we're supposed to do. The government is supposed to protect our rights. We are supposed to solve our own problems. That's what federalism is. But at the end of the day, when it comes to religion, in fact, religion is one of the five power conferences of society that I talk about. Religion is nothing more than an indoctrination service. You get the right person who looks good. He talks good. And he utilizes scriptures 
the scriptures that he wants to preach and he shares them with his congregation. But when it comes to what's going on right now in a crisis, and there were other crises, when there was Hurricane Sandy, when there was H1N1, which is the swine flu, we know about it. Were you religious leaders then? Now, I'm not saying some of them haven't donated, but I don't hear any real outcry from the religious community regarding this coronavirus. Where's Louis Farrakhan? He's supposed to be the head Negro in charge of the nation of Islam. Where is he? Where's Jesse Jackson? Where's Al Sharpton? These guys have made millions of dollars from black folk and white folk. Whether they shook down companies, whether they got involved in politics. These guys aren't out there on the front lines helping these victims out. They have enough money to travel to these hospitals. Even have athletes. They're stepping up. But when it comes to these pastors, these evangelists, you have to ask, are they going to be worth supporting after this is all over? I'm going to say to a number of Christian women, you're going to support these guys anyway, because they can do no wrong. because you love these guys. They make you feel good. But I'm talking about the principle of what's going on right now. These guys have plenty of money and they're asking for more money. And asking for money from the congregation and a number of the church members can't even get out of the house. Again, Number of these church members are out of work. Number of your congregation members, they have to pay their mortgage. They have to pay their cable bill. They have to pay their cell phone bill. They have to pay their electric bill. They have to pay for food. How come none of these churches bought canned goods and, and toilet tissue for the residents. Because the church is supposed to be a place that gives you help. Especially if you are putting 20, 30, 40, 50, or whatever amount into that church every Sunday. Yes, you get a tax write-off for it because it's a donation. But should the church not be out there providing services in the neighborhood I mean the church used to be a gathering during the civil rights era particularly in, in the African American community but the church today is a complete failure most of these pastors are frauds the church is nothing more than a money scam. These pastors will tell you everything that sounds good, but at the end of the day, these pastors, they're not good people. They're wicked. They do not believe in God. They believe in money. Now, you need money to live, but these individuals have made a successful living off of people. And this is why a number of Working people today don't like capitalism. They don't like corporate welfare because they work hard for their change. 
while you got people like your pastors who constantly ask for money. Certainly you need to keep your building running. But again, the principle is how come your religious leaders aren't out there helping some of the victims of the coronavirus? And there are going to be more deaths from this virus or symptoms of this virus. Because I'm still not convinced that this is a man-made scam to basically destroy the economy so Trump won't get reelected again. I don't know if you you pastors have been told by the government not to help. Because a lot of these churches and government, they're in bed together as well. You got to understand that these churches, just like child support, it's all legal extortion. We all know that, ones who pay attention. And see, you weak-minded people out there who go to church and you're looking for hope, you're looking for change, you need to start asking your pastors what they're doing with your money. Why they aren't donating to the cause. Now again, I'm not criticizing all pastors, but I did give you some big names who are asking for money from their congregation. And at the end of the day, when it comes to religion, religion is supposed to be the power of healing. I mean, heck, I see some of these evangelists on TV putting their hands on the forehead saying, you're healed. People aren't healed. These people walk out with the illusion of feeling good. They're still sick. The real healing is you take your money and you help your congregation get through this struggle. Well, church was a place to assemble. Well, the pastor was the leader of the church, a representative of God. I thought the pastor was supposed to be true to his congregation. I thought this pastor was a counselor. I thought this pastor helped the poor. But apparently, they don't. I mean, there used to be shows that came on, and these were black shows, and they were about pastors. I believe one was pastors from Detroit, pastors from L.A., and they had no problems with making money off of religion. But let me tell you something. If you are dealing with God or the Most High, God is not one person you want to play with because you'll get yours at the end. And in the Bible, does it say Blasphemy is wrong? Doesn't it say you have to help the poor? Help the sick? My question is, were you religious leaders during this time of sickness? I mean, I don't even hear anything from the Pope right now. And in this time, this is where religion has to shine. But again, I'm asking a question that I already know the answer to. These pastors don't care about their congregations. They don't care about the, their people. The pastor's job is only to make people feel good. To tell them what they want to hear. Take their money. 
and these pastors, these evangelists, or these evangelicals, or these evangelists, they're going to go about their own business and take care of themselves because they don't care anything about the congregation. This is what I've been trying to tell a number of you Christian women who believe in God so much and you don't want anybody talking about your pastor. These pastors aren't going to help you. They're not going to save you. They're there to take your money and what you're doing, you're continually feeding these pastors. You're helping their lifestyle while you are decreasing your lifestyle because a number of you individuals who are Christian, men and women, you're going to church, you're broke. Well, right now, with no services, these pastors are begging for money. But they can do virtual services, and they are making money. They have a lot of net worth. Not talking about some of the big names out here. But the way you make a name for yourself as a religious leader is, you got to get out there to help the people. You got to show the people that they, that they are God's children. You got to show these people that you are a man of God. God sent you there to try to cure them. You got to be a man who's going to give them some hope. And sometimes with that hope, there's a financial reward with it. Again, when I say financial reward, you give your congregation something temporarily to help them get through the stress. Because what happens if some of your congregations lose their house? They lose their car. Are you still going to come back as a pastor and ask them for money? Hell yeah, you are. Because you are the frauds you are. Because you present yourself as a fraud. See, church is not about God today. Again, just like child support, church is nothing but legal extortion. And with the doors shut on the church, a number of these pastors are, are going to ask for even more money. But you Christians out there, particularly you women, if you don't have a pot to piss in and a back door to throw it out, don't throw your money away to these fraudulent pastors. Because at the end of the day, You're not going to be healed. But when it comes to these pastors, these pastors don't have any power. You're finding out now that they're human. The only difference between a pastor and somebody like myself is they have a church, they have more money. But they believe just like me make mistakes just like me. Now, these pastors are dishonest. And at the end of the day, when it comes to you Christians out there, I don't hear any outcry about these pastors. And that's your fault as well. Because you believe in these pastors. You think all these pastors are going to go to heaven? No. They're not going to go to heaven. Because they're frauds. They're blasphemous. And in times of crisis, they're, no way, they're nowhere to be seen. Now again, I'm not talking about all pastors. But you have enough of them out here who tell you they believe in God, but they're not doing God. Now, like I said, I believe in God. But I also believe in reality. But well, one thing I will tell you, if I need to donate. I don't have a problem doing it. Now, I mean, I'm just not going to give my money away to some random person. No. 
donate to an organization. But these pastors are out here using their congregation to get rich. That's crony capitalism. That's extortion. And the worst thing is, they don't care about their congregation. They lie to their congregation. These individuals have been scamming for a long time. That's why they get into religion. It's easy money. But at the end of the day, if you're a pastor, you got no power. You got no belief in God. And all you're doing to your congregation, with your congregation, is you're extorting money from them for your own personal gain. And that's my commentary for this edition of the 401 Talk Zone Radio Show right here on YouTube. If you like what I just presented, please comment, share, and subscribe. Also, if you're looking for some education when it comes to science, technology, engineering, and math, get on over there to the Mind of STEM channel. And on that channel, I'm giving you a daily dose of science, technology, engineering, and math. And I talk about different subjects, including chemistry, engineering, biology, calculus, but also, every weekend, you check out my blog talk radio show. I give you that hot content. Now, the days will vary. I'm on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. I do have a call-in number. Call-in number is 215-383-5785. Correction. 215-383-5785. Now, if you can't find any of my blog talk radio shows or YouTube videos, you can always email me. My email is at the bottom of all of my videos. Also, check me out Facebook and Twitter. And I'm going to leave you with this. And this is God. Be blessed for what you have. Don't worry about what you don't have. Always know that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. And for the individuals out here, take care of each other. I mean, take this virus seriously if you're sick. But at the end of the day, you keep praying. Thank you for listening to this video. I just want to say God bless you. Wonderful and blessed day. Once again, my name is Leon Jones. I'm out.